If you enjoy my YouTube channel, you've probably seen the episode with my dad where he details his 30 years as a Marine Corps attack pilot. In that episode, Dad remembers how he met and quickly fell in love with my mom during his time as a SIRGRAD flight instructor in Pensacola, Florida. This week, we lost my mom after she suffered a fall that caused a cerebral hemorrhage that brain surgeons couldn't arrest and that put her into a vegetative state from which they said she would never emerge. Her will contained a do not resuscitate clause, so she was kept on life support just long enough for my two brothers and I to travel from the eastern seaboard to join Dad in Central Florida at her bedside to say our painful goodbyes. So this is the episode I never wanted to make. Not this soon, anyway. But I'm compelled to on the occasion of her passing, because without Nancy Hasey Carroll, my father doesn't make it to full colonel, and I don't attend the U.S. Naval Academy or do any of the things in naval aviation that I was allowed to do after that. So let me tell you a little bit about this amazing woman to whom I basically owe everything. It all starts in St. Louis in the fall of 1936 when mom was born. My grandparents, Bill and Loretta Hasey, lived in a comfortable Tudor-style home in the suburb of Webster Groves. And that would be where mom would spend her childhood and adolescence in the company of animals, especially dogs, and playing sports, especially swimming and golf. My uncle Bill was a few years older than mom, and as most big brothers do, he both teased and protected his little sister, which instilled her with equal measures of toughness and tenderness as she grew up. She had a close circle of friends through high school, and when it came time for college, the closest among them selected the University of Missouri. During her freshman year, Mom rushed the Kappa Alpha Theta sorority, and being a Theta was something she enjoyed during her undergraduate years and identified with for the rest of her life. She graduated with a degree in education and a teaching certificate. Her plan was to return home to start working as an elementary school teacher. As well as being smart, she was a stunning beauty, so requests for her hand were numerous, many of them coming from sons of the most prominent St. Louis families. But all of that changed when Kay Harvey, a sorority sister, invited Mom down to Pensacola to visit. What Mom didn't know is Kay also intended to introduce her to one of her new Navy pilot husband's fellow flight instructors, a Marine Corps second lieutenant named Ned Carroll. Whatever promise of stability and security her St. Louis suitors might have offered disappeared under the waves of the Gulf of Mexico as she and Dad quickly fell in love and never looked back. Within months, Wedding bells were ringing, a fairy tale affair back in Webster Groves. After the wedding, Mom received a letter from none other than the Commandant of the Marine Corps welcoming her aboard. But the tone of the letter is not entirely upbeat. And in the context of today's relatively softer messaging from military leadership to families, it's remarkable and maybe even a little bit shocking. In it, General Pate writes, Marine Corps life is not always easy for any of us. Sometimes it's particularly difficult for the wives. My wife and I have found it this way, and no doubt you and your husband will also. The Marine Corps has much to give. Friendship with the finest people, a busy and useful life, travel to many interesting and strange places, and many others. The Marine Corps is also a jealous and hard mistress. The Corps demands much. Separation for periods that seem eternal. Living conditions that are sometimes almost primitive and often too expensive. Sudden and unexpected changes of plans that complicate family life. Again, these are only a few of the hardships. I am enclosing a copy of a letter that I received from a widow of a Marine officer. He gave his life for our Corps. It is pertinent to your new status. And then the Commandant ends the letter with, Good wishes for a wonderful career in the finest military organization in the world. So the subtext from the senior most Marine is basically, Your husband could likely die performing his duties, so it's a good idea to prepare for it. With that sobering reality in mind, Mom entered into life as a Marine Corps attack pilot's wife. And for the next three decades, she made her peace with, if not actually befriended, what General Pate labeled as a jealous and hard mistress. During Dad's military career, Mom served as his wingman in every billet from squadron pilot where she had to conjure up the strength on a daily basis that there wouldn't be a black sedan parked in the driveway when there was a knock on the door, to assistant naval attaché where she was a de facto diplomat who shaped the impressions of the U.S. with allies and potential enemies alike, to commanding officer where she was responsible for the morale and well-being of 30-some officer spouses and three times as many enlisted spouses. Over 30 years, the family lived in 12 different homes, spanning the globe from Southern California to the Netherlands, which equates to a move every two and a half years. Four of those tours had 13-month periods where mom was a single parent to three boys, including when we lived in Kirkwood near Grandma and Grandpa Hazi while Dad was flying A-4s out of Chu Lai and Da Nang in Vietnam. Wherever we lived, mom doggedly led the effort behind creating a quote-unquote normal for us. Whether we lived on base or rented nearby, 
She applied her sophisticated but budget-conscious decorating style to the place, putting up curtains or painting walls or transforming weed-choked gardens into yard-of-the-month contenders. Always leave a place better than you found it, she'd say. And yes, she loved clowns and was characteristically obsessive with how she went about collecting them. And my mom convinced my dad, the hard-ass Marine, to join her in dressing up as a clown, and not just on Halloween. They called themselves Salty and Sally. Mom pushed us to emerge from the cocoon we were inclined to build around us as we faced the daunting prospect of starting from scratch, forcing us to turn off the TV and go out and get involved with the local community, regardless of how short our stay was going to be. As a result, all of us became good at making friends and figuring out situations quickly. And that's something that served me in the Navy quite well. At the same time she supported us, she attended to her own personal growth, never satisfied to quietly exist in the shadows of Dad's accomplishments, as proud as she was of them. The first time my father had an unaccompanied tour overseas, my mom created a clothing line that was picked up by Saks Fifth Avenue. During a subsequent unaccompanied tour, when we lived near my grandparents on my father's side in Traverse City, Michigan, she got a real estate license and became the leading broker at one of the local companies. And she didn't complain when Dad's follow-on orders forced her to chuck the professional reputation and network she'd built during that year. She simply got her license in Rhode Island and went on to dominate the market with a firm in Newport. Then she did it again in Northern Virginia when Dad got orders to Quantico. And this energy didn't dissipate after Dad's Marine Corps service came to an end. She continued to kick ass as a realtor in Northern Virginia, which in time allowed him to retire, retire. And even when the two of them moved to a military retirement community in Central Florida, Mom continued to achieve as a prominent member of the Civic Association, who oversaw the redesign of a community center and the adjacent restaurant, and a marketing plan that led to an uptick in home sales in a very competitive market. And she was the women's golf club champion for 14 years in a row, a Tigeresque accomplishment that's not likely to be repeated. You see, most people naturally assume I got my drive from my father, the attack pilot. After all, he flew jets and went to war and led Marines. But it was my mom who showed me how to achieve, who first instilled in me the faith that I was capable of great things and then pushed me to do them. She was literally my campaign manager who scripted out the strategy when I was elected middle school president. And towards the end of high school, when the Naval Academy admissions process got too hard for me, and it is hard, and I was ready to give up, she was there with the reference information about the next step and the tough love to ensure that I followed through. When my niece, who's the wife of a Super Hornet pilot station in Japan and was very close to my mom, got word of her passing, she wrote a Facebook tribute that beautifully captures her influence. In this tribute, Madison writes, I was newly married, about to move across the globe, and filled with so much anxiety about shoes I didn't know how to fill. And you tough love me into acceptance that this life is a beautiful one. You, a Marine colonel's wife, did all of this and so much more not too long ago. Continents now divide us, but I've never felt closer to you. In the past year, I see you everywhere. I feel you constantly in every tough moment, every O'Conus adventure, every lingering feeling of doubt, every moment I need tough love to keep pushing forward. If you've met Nancy Hazy Carroll, you probably have a story where, in some way or another, she quote-unquote helped you do things her way. Always fierce and passionate, I've never met anyone who cared more about quality and effort. Albeit tough sometimes to hear, in her own way, she just truly wanted the best for all around her. From the bottom of my heart, I wouldn't be the woman I am without you. To know you is to love you, or to be intimidated by your take-no-BS presence. You've set the bar for women, grandmothers, and people in general higher than most, and I'll spend my life hoping to leave behind half of what you have. My wife, Carrie, was also very close to my mom. I have been incredibly blessed to have two strong military spouses shape my life in the way that they did. My mother, who was married to a Navy attack pilot, my father, and Nancy. Nancy shared many, many stories about their duty stations around the world. One in particular that I loved was their time when they were in The Hague in the Netherlands when Ned was an attache. A couple of years ago, we visited the house where they lived. When I walked into the house, I could picture Nancy entertaining diplomats and foreign dignitaries, and it filled me with such great pride. She was an incredible mother-in-law, she was an incredible mentor, and she set an example for me as a young military spouse of how to raise a family, sometimes on your own, and do it successfully and make a difference. She inspired me 
She challenged me. Nancy was very strong-willed and opinionated, but most of all, she loved me and I loved her. With Nancy Carroll gone, I've lost my biggest fan and advocate. She was proud of her boys to a fault, but with her on your side, you couldn't lose.